A string quartet is a tight musical family that stays together for years, if not decades. In order to be successful, members not only have to be supremely talented, but they have to have personal chemistry. It's like a four-way marriage, but all four people have to be in love, or at least agree not to get divorced. For the local and rising Harlem Quartet, their marriage is one that fell in hard times when not just one, but two members decided to call it quits. Thus began a year-long secret search to search for new members. All the while, they had to maintain a grueling touring and performing schedule. I'm Dina Rudick with The Backstory, here with the Boston Globe's Jeff Edgers, who hitched along on this often dramatic ride, and he's here to tell us all about it. So was it a dramatic ride? It was a, a very strange experience because I thought I was just writing about a quartet and sort of the musical challenges of trying to make it. And what I really found was something that you'd find if you were covering a rock band. You know, these four personalities, some of them very different from each other, and, uh, you know, really struggling to stay together. To recap the story, you have four quartet members, and one of them sends an email and says, I love you guys, but I'm out. Yeah. And, and then shortly thereafter, another member prompted by that email said, you know what, I was actually thinking about leaving too. And so in short order, you had these two members po positioning themselves to leave, but they had to keep it a secret. They kept, and the funny thing is the cellist who was leaving, I knew about that and I was following it through. The violist, they didn't tell me for a long time, like months, so I was covering it. And what was funny about that guy, the violist, is he would talk to me, I'd have private conversations with him, and he'd be like, I don't know if I can take this much longer. And I'd be like, wow, they're gonna have a problem. In fact, they all knew that he was out, and he wasn't really supposed to be talking to me like that. But then later when I found out, I suddenly had all this material in my notebook that I didn't know how to use at the time, but now I had it. As you reported this, you got to know things about each member that perhaps they would wish to keep private. Yeah. And then as you learn these things, you had to be a blank slate to them too. So there's yeah. like a lot of boundaries and secret keeping. How did you navigate that? Well, it's not that hard for me because it's a basic rule of reporting, whether I'm doing a year long project with four people that I'm spending a lot of time with, or I'm writing one story, which is as a, as a, as a newspaper person, my job is not to alter reality. That's like our do no harm basically. Don't do any harm or don't do any good. Yeah. I just don't do anything. Yes. Just don't mess with reality. That's my job. I mean my job is to document reality not not change it. They've really opened themselves up so how did you get them to sign on for this in the first place? Well I don't think they really understood what they were signing on for and I'm still not even sure they know. I mean they just had a guy come into them as a reporter at the Globe saying, hey, we'd like to do, you know, a really involved piece on you. You know, these groups don't get a ton of attention. So I think they were just like, hey, sure, come on over. Uh, there were different periods of time though where I tried to really get into their lives and get into the process where I felt a pushback. And I realized that now they were starting to get it, that I wasn't just there to like, come in and do like a happy fluffy feature on them that I was there to really intrude and you know be a fly on the wall. Well actually I went Ilmar is one of the members of the quartet Yeah. and um, I spoke with him about his interaction with you and his experience being studied um, by a reporter and he he said some interesting things. Well he he'd been really relentless at a tiny pen in the butt I agree. <laughs> I am. Since the beginning, I, I was aware of, of the value of his, of his um, just for fun, let's call it obsessive uh, attention to detail. But even though you know what's, uh, what he's after, still in, in practical terms, sometimes be, definitely became much. You know, for them, you know, I might say that, you know, they tried to push me off a couple of times, but for them to welcome me into their world, I mean, I'm real lucky. I mean, it's, it's not often that happens. I mean, when the symphony holds an audition, they have a sheet and they have someone come in behind the sheet and you can't find out who's behind there. Wow. I mean, this is a world shrouded in secrecy. Mm -hmm. And so for these four musicians to let me in, I mean, I feel honored. I mean, I needed to respect that. Like at some point he, he, he was our confidant. For instance, we already knew certain people would not make it but we were not ready to make that announcement just yet for X reason. Uh, and 
but we needed to tell Jeff so he doesn't waste so much time interviewing them or flying somewhere. He, you know, when he gives his word, he, I mean, there is no question. I, I trust him. So this story has a happy ending. I mean, they did find, not only did they find members, but they actually found the person that they originally wanted, who turned them down, who came back around and said, sure. Maybe it's a happy ending. I don't know. Check back in a year or two. We don't know the answer, but we do know that they're not, they're, they're not done in by this. And that's, you know, we can only hope for the best.